All right. And now that we're talking about Crazy Labs anyway, um, I'd love to introduce our first speaker, um, uh, Rotem Eldor from Crazy Labs, who is going to tell us uh, more about Dr. Hyper and Mr. Casual, how to stay in the top charts for 10 years in a row. Hello. Hey, Martin. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks. All right. Well, whenever you're ready, feel free to kick off. Okay, so I am ready. Let me just share my screen. I'm hoping that you will see it in a second. So hello everyone. Thanks for coming and virtually joining us. Um, here in Tel Aviv, it's quite sunny. So we have no reason to stay indoors, but if you are indoors or wherever you are, um, we're welcoming you of course to today's talk about Dr. Hyper and Mr. Casual. Um, these are tough times of course, and we are all still going in and out of lockdowns, but we're doing the best we can, of course, with what we have. And today we'll speak about how to actually stay relevant and stay in this industry of constantly changing. And this is what we'll talk about today, especially inspiring studios which might want to shift um, their primary business or people who are still having tough times staying or keeping up with, uh, with the constantly changing environment. So this is our agenda for today. Um, it's been said that in order to succeed in the mobile gaming industry, you have to stay focused. However, in the long run, we see that studios need to diversify their portfolio in order to minimize risks. So today we'll speak a little bit about the history of hypercasual and how to level up in the top charts. We'll have an amazing bonus tip. So it's worth uh, to stay for that. And we'll also discuss of what brought Crazy Labs into the hyper casual gaming industry to begin with, and what was the effect of having an internal team as well as a team of publishing experts, and how it helps us as a studio, and of course, the developers that we're working with to reach the top charts. So, apart from Publishing games were also a gaming studio, as I mentioned. We have the hyper casual lab, we have the casual lab, and we also have another top secret lab, which is doing some very cool stuff. So it's worth to stay tuned. A little bit about us Crazy Labs is a top three publisher um, with over 3.9 billion downloads for our games. We're really reaching the 4 billion download mark. We have over 100 million unique monthly active users. We have offices in Tel Aviv, Shanghai, Skopje, Luyang, Kiev. So if you're also searching for your next job, you might find it here with us. Just a little about me. My name is Rotem. I'm a senior publishing manager here in Crazy Labs. I've been working in the gaming industry for the last eight years. So, and as a true gamer myself, I'm always looking for really cool new games to work on. I'm not a hyper casual gamer, but still when I'm playing some cool hyper casual games, it really gets me, gets me going. And I think that is really the, the key of working in this crazy industry. So it's not a history lesson and I'm not going to, I'm hoping I'm not going to be boring uh, in the talk. I don't want to tell you the entire history of the gaming industry or the hyper casual industry, but it's very important to understand the past when we're looking into the future, especially when we're trying to make the best use of our time as creators and not work on something that might be even off trend or not even as successful anymore. So I know you all know these rules by heart, but sometimes we all know that we forget to pay attention to the right things when we're working on a game especially when we're working on something that we think is very cool and we kind of forget all the rules that come with the hyper casual um, guidelines, as we say. So what is, the, what is hyper casual? Hyper casual games are simple, they're short, they're satisfying, they're easy to learn, easy to master. Uh, in just about five minutes of game time, you will have a beginning, a core and an end. So it's something that doesn't happen in casual games, doesn't happen in MMOs, in PC games, in, in console games. It doesn't happen anywhere but in the hyper casual industry. 
So you can have a five minute session and feel like you accomplished something. It could be played by you, by your kids, by your grandmother. It has mass appeal, right? So when we're talking about who is the core audience of let's say a strategy game. So these are people with high enough concentration and attention and the skill to play strategy games or a shooter game or a casual game or any other game. But when we're talking about hyper casual, it could be anyone. And we see that in fact, it is everyone who plays these games. These games are highly replayable, meaning you don't have to have a very sophisticated GLD or a very sophisticated level funnel. You do of course need to look at the data and we encourage everyone to install a level funnel and work only by the data. But we also see that these games are addictive enough to have a more simplified level funnel in GLD than other games. Also, it's easy to monetize, right? We're not looking for a too sophisticated game economy. Most of the revenue, the vast majority of the revenue of these games is monetized through in-app ads. And of course, and we'll talk about it more uh, in depth later on this uh, presentation, it's speedy introduction. It doesn't take you six months, six weeks even to create a game. It's very fast and we iterate very fast in order to see if we are in the right direction or not. And let's, let's talk about it more in depth in a few slides. So when we're looking at the road to uh, top jar domination, we see that you know, for the ones of you who are long enough in this industry, we understand that the hyper casual industry and the gaming industry itself has changed through the years. If we had a uh, flappy bird in 2013, where endless impossible loops were the trend, um, we understand that it's not the case anymore. If, the, if any of you ever played flappy bird, it took you about, I don't know, five, six, seven tries to pass the first two seconds of the game. It takes skill. If I play it and I've played it, I don't know, for 20 minutes and the new guy comes out and he plays it, we won't be at a different, it won't be at the same level. We will be in a different level because this game requires skill. Nowadays, we don't ever see these games anymore. It might come back. There's a lot of people saying that Flappy Bird will come back in one way or another, but at the moment, we don't see it. We saw the exact opposite in the evolution of hyper casual, right? Landscape mode is gone. People like to, uh, where's my phone? People like to play like this and not like that because they want to move between screens and, and talk to their friends while they're doing it or talk to the mothers on the phone while doing it. So they don't need to have full concentration at these games. The games move to level-based and they're easy to, to learn easy to master. You don't fail at the first one, two, three levels. You just don't. And if you do, it's a bad gaming experience for the users. And on top of that, in the last year, we see that most of the games, you can't even fail if you want to. It might take you a little bit longer to pass the level, but you will not be able to fail. Um, what will happen next and what will be in 2021 or 2022, we have no idea. That's why it's fun and that's why we are here. Uh, but we do see an evolution in the hyper casual games in the last two years, year, six months, and we see that it gets easier. So again, uh, Crazy Labs as a company has gone a long way, uh, reinventing itself over the years from casual games to what they used to call super casual games to what we all know and love today, which is hyper casual games. The point here is not to talk about our history, but I do want to inspire the teams who are at this point of thinking of shifting to follow trends. You might be working on casual games for five years now or RPG or um, other storytelling games and you're kind of not finding yourself in the industry. This is an inspiration talk for the ones who are thinking to shifting to this hyper casual uh, genre. I wouldn't call it the trend, but it is a genre. Um, and see how with a small change, you can turn your lives around. So since hyper casual production is very fast and snappy, we 
I will always like to give the best case scenario and the worst case scenario of developing a hyper casual game. It's always more fun to start with the best case scenario. So that's where I start. Um, you find an idea that you like, you find a trend that you like, you find a gameplay that you like, you're thinking about, you know what, I can create a game. This mechanic looks fun. This trend looks fun. This art style looks fun. And you kind of combine them together. You create a gameplay video. Think about like a storyboard that you're building and you test it only for CTL. You don't even have to have a build on the store. Some people really like to create a build to test for CTI. It's also fine. You test it for either CPI or CTR and you see if you're on the right direction or not. First part is the marketability. Hyper casual games are highly marketable, meaning high CTR, low CPI, lots of people want to download these games, very cheap CPI, and that's how you scale your games. If you don't have it, it's not a good hyper casual game. It could be something else, but it's not a good hyper casual game. Let's say you do have it, best case scenario, you start working on the game, start working on either CPI if you tried CTL before, or if you already passed CPI, build the game for retention, create a level base, create uh, 20, 25, 30 minutes of game time just to test and check that people want to come back to your game the next day, meaning you have high day one retention, right? We're testing two things. One, that the game is marketable, meaning people want to play the game. And second, that they want to stay in the game. Once we pass this, and it's also important to have a lot of communication with your publisher because they are highly experienced in releasing games. Uh, and if they don't give you them enough attention, you should demand it. And you test for ARPU. ARPU is the average revenue per user, right? So very simple equation, how much it costs us to, to acquire a user on average versus how much we gain from them. So if the CPI is higher than the ARPU, we're not in a good situation. If the CPI is lower than the ARPU, we are in a good situation and we're ready to start scaling. That was the best case scenario. It shouldn't take you long, it should take you around one or two weeks to understand if you are in the right direction or not. Let's move to the worst case scenario, which you will see it's not that bad. So let's say you spent time on working on a CTL test, working on a CPI test, trying to see if the game has a market. Now, worst case scenario, you failed in either of those and you spent two or three weeks working on a game that you understand that is not highly potential and you throw it away. First, you learn from it. And second, you need to know that it's very, very hard to nail it with a great CTL or great CPI. We also fail a lot as a company, as publishers, as developers, as a studio. People always fail. And that's very important to learn, to understand that. Um, but we allow our developers to fail because we support them and we try to help them learn from their mistakes, right? That way we can move to the next idea and make it better. So let's say in eight weeks, you can test four or even six videos. And with the right publisher, you also might cover some of your expenses. Now, I want to share some tips regarding creating a hyper casual game which will be super relevant to the guys who are shifting from other genres, but also very important for people who are currently working on hyper casual games and they might have a portfolio of 30 games. So the portfolio itself, you got a portfolio, great. Don't hide it. You can, you can have in your portfolio, a lot of genres. You can have casual, hyper casual strategy, whatever you do, it doesn't matter. You don't have to hide your current portfolio if you are working on hyper casual games. If you change your direction, it's great. Focus on what you're doing and make sure that everyone uh, you're working with will see the portfolio. And that's also very important to actually show what you can do as a studio. But reworking games which didn't work might not be worth your while. If something fails, it fails. Don't try to resuscitate it and don't try to overwork something that already showed that it doesn't have promise. Keep thinking about the time you're wasting and utilize your time to do good things and to work on things that have potential. 
the pitch. I can talk about pitches all day. I can talk about it on and on. In fact, we have another talk only about pitches uh, next week, so stay tuned. If I can sum it up to one slide, I would say that make sure that your pitching and your pitch that you're working on is something that has marketability. Look it up on YouTube, look it up on Instagram, look it up on TikTok. See what you're pitching and also check always the top charts to make sure that you are with the trend and you're not falling behind. Um, think about the storyboard. I already said it a couple of slides ago, but it's very important. So when you're building a video and you're creating a video to test either CTR or CPI, you're not showing the game. You're showing a video, you're showing a storyboard. So when someone sends me a pitch or a video or a gameplay, me as bottom the publisher, I'm concentrated at looking at the video or playing the game or doing whatever is necessary to understand what I'm looking at. When Rotem the user sees the ad for the first time or not for the first time, doesn't even matter, I'm watching the ad while I'm scrolling on Facebook or on Instagram or on TikTok or in any social media that there is, right? I'm not interested in watching the ad. I don't care about the ad. So it has to be something that has a good onboarding that catches my eye in the first three seconds because otherwise, I'm gone, you, can, you won't even see me again. But this impression to see that the user wants to stop what he's doing right now, to stop seeing his friend's feed or pictures of cats or whatever it is and stop where he's, what he's doing, watch the ad, click the ad and download the game. That means that the game has high marketability. Let's talk a little bit about the team. So, some people came to me and said, uh, I want to increase the team. I want to build a team for hyper casual. I want to create 10 videos a month. I want to create 50 videos a month. Wait, before you do it, no, don't, don't overdo it. Start small, two, three people, game designer, developer, and an artist. It could be all in one. It could be two people. And test a few prototypes, create two, three, four prototypes, and see how they perform. Learn from your mistakes. Also, let your publisher guide you, right? So a good publisher tests around 300 games per month while you test, I don't know, three or four. So I'd never say that the publisher is always smarter than anyone, but he is more experienced. He does have the experience of telling you where you went wrong. Also, the publisher lives and breathes the top charts. I play all of the game in the top charts every day, so I kind of know what's trendy and what's not. We all have examples, right? And we all, you know, we can hear about success stories all day, uh, but I just wanna say a few things about the team. I'm sure you all remember the game Soap Cutting. It was created on Christmas uh, last year. It was created by three people, by a small team, that that's all they did. They created, uh, well, they created a few prototypes before, but then they created Soap Cutting, two developers, one designer, that's it. Then, they worked live ops for the game for four months, five months, six months. And then they said, okay, now let's create new prototypes. And then they created more prototypes. They failed, they failed, they failed. And then they succeeded with acrylic nails. That's all being done by two devs, one designer. And now after they have two top chart hits, they can start thinking of the increasing the team. They started increasing the team and that's how you should do it. You shouldn't overthink it and start increasing the team before you have something in your hands. The potential. Um, so we all know the potential of a hit hyper casual game, right? It does uh, bring a lot of revenue to both uh, ends and it can fund you for a long time ahead. But think about also the potential of what you're testing. So I wouldn't start testing and building a game for retention for game, for game time, for features, for whatever it is without knowing the potential of the marketability. Also, I wouldn't put in-app ads to check out before I know the day one retention. I wouldn't go ahead and waste my time. First, we test CTR or CPI. Then we test CPI, then we test day one, and then we'll test the output. We work very fast, but with short iterations and short milestones. I wouldn't say go work on a game, 
come back in six weeks and let's test. No, I would start testing because I know that the time is valuable. We do want to work fast, but we do also want to work smartly. And last but not least, the publisher. So you need a publisher with experience in pushing games to the top charts. We need experienced publisher in as many genres as you can, subgenres in the hyper-casual uh, genre, because we know that there are many of them. So you need someone who is more uh, diverse in portfolio as well. I would talk about the technology because you need someone to help you with SDKs. You need someone to help you with development. You need someone to help you with dashboards and learning from your mistakes. So it's very important when you're looking and searching for a publisher. Also growth, we all wanna grow our games. We all wanna grow our portfolio, but don't do it on account of hurting your core game. Don't bombard the users with rewarded videos and interstitials and then hurt the game and, and wonder to yourselves why the retention has gone bad, right? Think smartly on how to grow your game, your uh, portfolio, your team, whatever you need, but do it smartly. And of course, communication. You have to have feedback from your publisher, but also keep in mind that you're the game owner, right? You're the creator of the game, so you need to own it. You need to own your game. Of course, I would always, always look for uh, feedback from my publisher. And if you're not getting it, demand it. But you also need to know that you own the game and you know everything in and out about your game. So um, it always feels too short, right? When, when we talk about hyper casual games and I feel like I can go forever, but we need to sum it up. So we have five points that uh, we want to convey. I will talk briefly about three because we have a very cool bonus tip ahead of us. Um, so first, don't overdo it. Work with small iterations. Don't create the game before you know the marketability. Don't put ads before you have retention. Don't overthink it and don't overcomplicate it. Most of the chances that your first games or most of your games will fail the marketing test because that's how it is. So I wouldn't go ahead and push games and push uh, complexity and create features and think, you know, five or six updates ahead. Don't do it. Think about the marketability of the game before you start testing anything else. Second, I, was, I would always, always, always work on the next game while I'm waiting for uh, the game to be approved or tested, right? It takes a couple of days to test for CTR, CPI, retention, whatever. You know, hope for the best, expect the worst, so start working on your next game because there is a big chance that your game will fail. So don't just click refresh on the dashboard every couple of minutes, it doesn't work. It doesn't help anyone just to stay at home and refresh. Work on your next ideas always. Best case scenario, your game succeeds. Great, ditch it, come back to this game a couple of months later. And uh, last but not least, marketability tests are a must. Don't move forward without seeing test results first. So we have a bonus tip, which is the human factor. Uh, it's personally something that I love. So. If you're taking anything, one thing from this presentation, take these slides. Let's have a hypothetical situation that is not that hypothetical. I'm sure it happened to all of you. It happened to me at least a couple of times. You're working on a game, you find a pitch, you fall in love with it. You start working on the idea. You start working on the storyboard, on the pitch, on the game, on whatever it is. You fall in love with this. You, feel, you think to yourself, this is my hit game. This is what's going to bring me to the top charts. You uh, show to your friends, to your girlfriends, to your family. They all love it. You all love it. You get your hopes up. You get your expectations up. You test the game for CPI or CTR and it fails. The entire team gets demotivated and you have no idea what you're doing next. So first, don't consider this as a failure. It's just a minor setback on the road to success. That's it. We also fail a lot. Everybody does. When you're looking at the top chart, you're seeing the top 100 games, the top 100 succeeding games, right? These are all successes, but you have no idea behind them how many tests they failed. 
They failed a lot and I can promise you and every person you will speak to will tell you that. You fail a lot before you succeed and that's how it goes. So I wouldn't get demotivated. We, always, we all have the basic knowledge, right? I spoke about five tips of getting your um, hyper casual game to the top charts and these are great tips and you should all follow that. But it doesn't guarantee you success. If I knew what's going to work, I wouldn't stand here talking to you. I would just sit in my basement and I would work 24 hours a day on a game that will get me to the top charts. But it's not the case. And that's how it happens. We have no idea what is going to be a hit. And you know what? That's, that's what's fun about this industry as well. And that's so fun. What's so fun about hyper casual games. And that's also the foundation of the relationship between the publisher and the developer, the constant communication and motivating each other. So if I would take something from this talk is to do not get demotivated. So we're going to finish off with uh, some fun stuff. We have um, an unlimited pool prize in our endless campaign in case you missed it. So go to our website, submit your game, send it to me, send it to your publishing manager and uh, you can get uh, revenues just for submitting and testing your games. Also, in case you missed, we have uh, two hubs that we open, one in Mumbai, India, and one in Tel Aviv, Israel. Uh, if, and we're not just uh, financially supporting them, of course, but we're also bringing them and guiding them along the way. Currently, we have these two hubs and we're opening new ones very soon. So stay tuned wherever you are. Here is uh, our latest boot camp from the Israeli hub. These are the highlights and the sessions that we gave them. We really injected them with everything there is to know and everything we know about hyper casual games. And uh, I'll give you a small spoiler. Very soon, one of these teams uh, is going to release their first hit with us. Um, so stay tuned and it's, it's a really fun game. Uh, it's a shame I can't show it to you right now, but you will soon see it. So everyone, thanks for coming. I hope you're staying safe. I see there's uh, some questions in the Q&A, so we'll be happy to take them and uh, answer everything. If you are looking for your next uh, hit and if you're looking for a publisher, feel free to ping me, ping any of the publishing managers in the team and we'll be happy to speak. All right, great. Thank you so much for an amazing talk. And yeah, you're right. There's a lot of questions waiting in the Q&A. So we have a few minutes left, so let's dive straight in it. Um, two questions that kind of come to the same thing. And that is if you can share benchmark figures uh, about CTR, CPI and day one retention. Of course. Um, so when we're looking at CPI, CTR and day one retention, and we're looking for US iOS, I, I'm looking for CTR, which is higher than 3%, CPI that is lower than 20 cents, and day one retention higher than 43%. Whew, that's some crazy competitive numbers. <laughs> Great. That's how Thank it you is. Thank so much for sharing. I'm sure that'll be very helpful for everyone uh, trying to break into this market. Um, the next question from Mr. X Nelson. Uh, he's, ask, he's asking, if you have a small team and you test earlier quickly, what do you think about the risk of being copycatted by a bigger team who have the ability to develop and skill content more? Yeah, so um, it's always a risk, right? But um, that's, that's the plus side of working with a big publisher. And all of the big publisher will say to you as well, they have marketing intelligence, they have competitive intelligence, and they're searching the App Store every day. So in case you are first and someone really copycat you, copy, copied you and not just got inspiration from you. We have big legal teams behind us that will be able to um, reach out to Apple, to Google, to the guys uh, directly and get them removed. If you search anytime on the Google Play Store for soap cutting, you will see at least 20 clones every day. And every day we remove all of them, at least the bigger ones, but new ones pop up. So if you do it alone, there's no chance you can go through it. But you, when you have a legal, a big legal team behind you, that's something that uh, we can help. All right, cool. Thanks. 
Um, there's actually a lot more questions, but we do need to close down to uh, make space for the next speaker. Um, sure. But uh, perhaps you, I can invite you to join the Discord server so you can answer some more questions there. Great, I'm there. Cool. Well, for all the people who uh, ask some questions, you hear it, Rotem will be on our Discord server. Uh, if you need a link to the Discord server, it is on your uh, Meets to Match page. So Rotem, thank you so much once again. And uh, talk thank to you, you Martin. It was great uh, to be here again. Bye. Bye.